worked but, there but, and still. Hold on, hold on. I mean, it's a man's yeah, it's, it's a man's man fight to ask, but you can't no, have no, one. You can't have one. What is this going to do with the first half? Troy, slap you on the counter. Wait a second, wait a second, out of You can't have a rule book. One rule for a championship hurling, and you have another rule for the first round. I don't mind, but I'm just saying to you. What rules did he break? I agree with both of you. I agree with both of you. I looked out here and I mm. counted five rows in five yeah, different, different areas, areas going on at the that's same time. Point. So how could you possibly just pick out somebody and send yeah, them on after yeah, that? Yeah. That happens. That I mean, is, I think this is the fourth meeting. It was always going to be that we were all going to have a kind of a conflagration. To I think it would have been, it would have been, been a after problem after if it continued. Yeah. If it did, they, yeah. they all got to know each yes. other. They carried yeah. on. He flashed the first yellow card to Tommy Walsh and it seemed to die straight away then after that because they knew anybody else that was going to break the line. But the point I'm making is this. That the refs, and I'm not blaming that ref, like, because as you said, you could sit off 10. They're doing their own rules. Like, they're being assessed all year. Now, how do you assess that? I'm just saying to you, if that was first round championship, you know well, there were at least two ways to sit off. We'll assess it for the GA. It was great. Let's look at the Kilkenny Gold Cup. Yeah, we'll assess it for the GA. It was great. Let's look at the Kilkenny Gold Cup. Let's look at the Kilkenny Gold Cup because this put a gap between the two sides that really put Kilkenny in the driving seat. Yeah, you know, it was nine points to seven. Kilkenny were two points ahead when Henry Shefflin got the ball here. And, you know, he had been doing nothing before this. But watch, look at the vision he has here. Reid breaks away from his man, leaves that ability to get Pollock. Maher doesn't close it down. And this time he hits it into the ground and puts it into the net. Before that, remember, Colin Finley got a chance. Didn't need it hard enough. But the, the pass from Shefflin there is absolutely brilliant. And the finish couldn't be better. Down into the ground, give Cummins no chance. Cummins had made two great saves yeah. before that. Down into the ground, ball into the net. It opened up a five-point a five point lead. Crucial thing there was how Tip responded. Yeah. Otherwise, that was the really, really vital thing. And Pad Box was sent goal yeah. was central to that. They responded well in their play. Now there was a certain element to the goal that I suppose was fortuitous. Uh, it must be a nightmare for any goalkeeper to find himself one on one with the forward. In this case, with two forwards. Yeah, and, and it, it, the key, as George said, was the response from Tipperary. They could die to death. They're going five points. Don't say this game is over. And once it breaks inside, look, I think it's probably Brian O'Mara gets the flick it. The key thing here is that Lard doesn't give up the challenge. Now the goalkeeper is the strongest physically strong but the key here Lard does not give up the ghost right. there he keeps going and inclined to arrive in the scene quicker than most absolutely but I mean it's a fair shoulder yeah. and the ball breaks and it's put into the back of the net no oh, it yeah. is a, it look, it's a lucky goal for Tipperary yeah, it's, it's probably a one that can, can you never see, see conceding too often but that gave Tipperary some sport to move on I mean to go point up within that 10 minutes of yeah. that first half period. Great yeah. response by Tipperary. You talked about the importance of the Kilkenny midfield before the match. They've lost one of those midfielders. Well, I've been watching Michael Finley as well while the game is on. And yeah. he's not moving yeah. with the same no. pace at all at all. He's not coming into the forward, he's just holding his pace. <laughs> now, look at this ball here. I know there'll be complaints that maybe Pollock Maher went in with one hand into this. But Maher has his eye on the ball. He often pulls with one hand. He comes in, hits him a shoulder, pulls with one hand, and it's just unfortunate that the whole he slides up, yeah. hits him in the finger. Probably a broken finger, I'd right say. Yeah, if he was dislocated, he'd be back on. Just a, one of those unfortunate accidents. Nothing dirty in that whatsoever. But, Michael, a big thing today is that Pab Buck is transferring his club hurling to the county hurling. Yes. He's always threatened to do that. Yeah. Babs Keaton had him on as his 18 year old. He's been doing this for Torla Sarsby. He's unreal lately. And he's beginning to trans transfer there today on the, on the first half performance. OK, the second half of Tipperary against Kilkenny is coming up here on the Sunday game. We'll be back with that after this short break. the Sunday game this evening we'll have highlights and analysis from all of the weekend's action including yesterday's Camogie semi-finals and ladies football quarter-finals so join Des Cahill at 9.30 on RTE2 now next Sunday we'll be back at Croke Park for the first of the semi-finals in the football championship it's Cork against Donegal in the senior match it's Mead against Mayo in the minor and our coverage begins at a quarter past one on RTE2 and that is in HD but at half-time in this hurling semi-final, Tipperary leading Kilkenny one goal and ten points to one goal and nine points. In front of an attendance, by the way, of just over 50,000, 50,220. Um, lads, if, if Brendan Cummins ever decides to do a, a DVD on his saves, it'll actually be a box set to begin with straight <laughs> off. Another one to add to the collection today. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the key, I suppose, for 
Tipperary not to be conceding too many goals against against Kilkenny. And this guy started very, very well, Aidan Forty. And that's a great ball inside. Breaks inside to TJ Reid. And he has been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, God, he started a great ball inside. You'll put your house on Colin Fenley to bury this into the back of the net. But Brendan Cummins has done what he's done so many times in the past. Gets his body across. And then inside, you get the ball breaking inside. The key was that they get it back out again and they get a free. So, I mean, fantastic stop. And look, you can see the reaction from the defenders around them. They know themselves. You see, he's made a you great you stop there. Right you know? You're right. And the defending afterwards. Look at the defending after the save. Absolutely brilliant. Maharin, Corden there. All surround the man. Until eventually, I think, it's Mickey Cahill gets the ball and breaks forward. You know, it's not alone the save. Yes. But the work of all the other defenders yeah. as well. Yeah. The follow yes. That was crucial. The ball didn't go in after a great save like, yeah. like that. And the, all the defenders in swarmed in. Mickey Cahill got it, broke forward, got a free out. That was a massive psychological boost to, to Tipperary. 71st Championship game, by the way, Bernard Cummins is playing for Tipperary today. That's oh. some... Unreal, and he's, and he's won the, the, the cool amount as the puck father as well. Like he, he's a brilliant goalkeeper. Like you know, mm. if, if you if you com compare that to, to Harris and Dutherin, who made that mistake, mm. that could be a vital mistake by the end of the match. Mm. But Cummins has done this so often, and like as the boys said there, like it, it draws the whole like tip of more, and the seem to have a bigger crowd than Kilkenny here. It draws the whole stadium. It was as good as the score, but like I, Kilkenny. I hope still we're not putting the commentators cursing about yeah, it. <laughs> Kilkenny, <laughs> Kilkenny are still very dangerous if they can last the pace. That yeah. pace is very mm. very fast. The fittest team I, I, is going I, I, to I win here now. It's very warm out there. The fittest team will win. As well, I mean, we, we must give a mention to Brian O'Mara, right? Every focus has been on Lar Corbett, has yeah. been on Henry Shefflin. I think Brian O'Mara has been immense for Tipperary in that first. I mean, you can see Lar, he wants to follow Tommy Welch all over the field, and Jackie Turrell is going with him as well. And they're beginning to forget about Brian. Brian O'Mara has won a mount of ball over on the right hand side as well, and he's actually distributed hand passes out, and a lot of the scores are coming from that side. You're right, Mark, because it's he, yeah. the unsung heroes that are doing it today, like TJ Reid and Aidan Fogarty, they started that game there. You know, Richie Power, Owen Larkin would want to step up to the plate now. You mentioned done, Harry, Henry Sheffield to me during the Henry, first time. Yeah, yeah, mm. apart from the one pass, that was the only time we saw that Henry. Hand you know, that, yeah, but the hand pass was The hand pass was great, but apart from that, he's, you know, he's, not, he's, he's not getting on the ball. So. I think a feature of the first I, half has been, has been the high field on mm. both sides. It's unbelievable, oh, it's the high field. Fantastic. They're very courageous under the Ball, fearless on the ball, get up, catch it, and driving it. There is a little bit of a drizzle actually starting here at Croke Park, so that would have a small. Yeah, I have a feeling second, second half as well. Half. I don't know about the, they're saying about the breeze, it's hard to judge it off when we are here, but it's, it's with Kilkenny in the second half. Now, you mightn't affect the game that much, but you probably find the puck outs, they will go for a bit more distance and put pressure on the tip backs. Yeah, and it's, the puck been, outs. it's been very physical as well, Michael. You yeah. wonder how much has taken out of the teams that first 35 yeah. minutes, right? And you're looking at the benches and who's to come off the bench, and you'll say Tipperary have the stronger bench mm -hmm. here. You would expect the likes of uh, maybe your Woodlock at some stage to come into place, Yamar, Dunamar, whatever, own Kelly to come in, Canlon, you know. So you would look that tip maybe have the stronger bench at this stage. And, and Kitty and Kitty yeah. is already on, you see, for yeah. well, you know, Richie yeah. Guy might what, come what on. What you see now, of course, is a ferocious assault by Kilkenny on the Tipperary goal that is after this game. This is what they always mm. do after half time, yeah. especially yeah. when they're, they're right. down. And they'll go for goal now early on. If Tip can resist that, if, mm. if Tip can hold out there and wait till 10, 10 or 15 minutes to go, bring in the likes of Shane Buck, maybe Owen Kelly, Seamus Canlon, who can run mm. at the defence, then this game is theirs for the winning, really. You know, they're yeah. in the ascendancy right now after scoring yeah. their one three to no score in the last 10 minutes. It's their, it's their game, but there's going to be a massive massive assault on that Tipperary goal now by Kilkenny. If they're capable of doing it, that's the question. This is the question because people were saying before this match, Sir Farrell, that this game was hard to call and it hasn't <laughs> changed too much. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I, I would think, I would think the they're, they're too good Harland they're too good Harland teams. But I would think the fittest team this time is going to win because it, it has, there's a trouble lot of hard physicality knocks going in. It's, someone is going to be worn down into it, you know, and whoever gets the lucky break will probably win it, you know, but I still have a feeling that Kilkenny could edge it, even though they're not Tipper going in very, very, Tipper the happier team at half time, there's no doubt about that. On a slightly side Sidebar uh, issue. <laughs> Tomás is slightly worried. Where was the rule book on goal we were playing Kilkenny a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> Absolutely, you weren't saying that two weeks ago. <laughs> no, but, no but the angle I'm coming from is this: like you see that there on television. I'm talking about the people at home. Like this hits going in. I like it, and the referee could do nothing probably about it. But you have to. Like, you can't have lads swinging hurls and one another, hitting lads off the ball. There's a rule there supposed to be. If you run, if you run in the second man into the fight, there's a third man in. You're supposed to be at least booked. Should the name of God Almighty? I'm not saying it was easy for him. I, I, so he did the right thing. But like someone is going to have to call it sometime. Because if that happened in a first round, in a first round Leinster Championship or a Munster Championship, you'd have lads le gone off left, right, and centre. And because it's semi final, it shouldn't be any different. But it's hard. The tension is there, and it's, it's gone over now. So well, to have a good second half. I'd say the tension will be gone out of this match around five o'clock. Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> that tension is gone. <laughs> all right, lads, thanks for all of that. Uh, teams back out, as you can see. Back to the commentary box then to rejoin Marty Morrissey and Michael Dyken. Thank you very much, Michael. As you mentioned, 50,220 here in Croke Park and thoroughly enjoying a pulsating contest. What's waiting for them is Galway.
on the 9th of September in the All Ireland hurling final. Marty, that's the best one I've seen. Martin, the ref threw in the ball and then tipped the funny 14 on the field. Eric Harvey hasn't come back out yet, wherever he is. He probably knew that Jackie Turley would be waiting at the tunnel for him. And <laughs> but I don't know where he is, but he's not out in the field. And well spotted is right, Michael, and uh, indeed. As we were watching the slither flying out over the sideline, there is still yeah, a player uh, available. Uh, Killian, Killian Buckley is on the field and will remain on the field until Brian Cody decides to take him off, obviously, because Michael Rice is injury. And now Lar Corbett has uh, been welcomed back onto the pitch rather belatedly. And again, we have more of what we saw at the start of the first half with uh, more shouldering and shoving and pushing going on behind the scenes as uh, eventually Tommy Walsh takes up Pat Burke and meanwhile while all that was going on we've got a point for Kilkenny. Henry Shefflin put over a free there and that is bizarre to say the least and I'd like to see Lara copping himself on a bit here and starting to hurl instead of going on with some sort of a side shot that nobody has any interest in it's not to do with hurling. Not exactly delayed Lara Corbett we do not know but he was late arriving back onto the field and uh, the referee wasn't uh, going away from him. As Colin Finlay swings a ball across over towards Aidan Fogarty, who arrives in spectacular fashion. Great catch, makes room for himself and flings it between the posts. Wonderful score by Aidan Fogarty, who has now scored three times, all of them from play. Well, he has, um, and what an attitude this man has. He's as tough as nails. He won a great ball in the air there and turned. And he's on Thomas Stephen, who I mentioned before the game, uh, has no experience at this level from the defender point of view, and he scored now three points from play. Here's Noel McGrath having a shot from way outfield. David Herald is there, it seems to hit off the poster, hit off his hurl. Patrick Bonamar trying to get inside the cover, trying to fire the uh, bullet, pull the trigger, didn't quite do so. But Kenny are back there in their numbers, including Paul Murphy at the right corner back in the left corner back position. The ball seems to have gone out over the end line. The umpire has his arm raised momentarily and he's now gone to the exact position the Slither went over the line and he's giving a 65 to Tipperary. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> while we were trying to figure out where Lara was, uh, Kilkenny have got two points and gone into the lead, but great defending there by uh, JJ Delaney. You know, Bonner Maher broke onto the ball. JJ just stood, stood his ground and held him out and showed his experience. And uh, he, there's off, then David Hurley didn't really know where that was. You see, the, you see the influence of the wind there, Norman McGrath didn't get the distance and it'll be interesting to see Tarbork now 65 into the wind. And that's a super strike. Great score. He's now got a personal tally of a goal and seven points. And the sides level again for the seventh time in this match. David Herity with the puck up. That slither hitting the post. Didn't hit off his hurl at all. Certainly caused a bit of panic in uh, Kilkenny. Killian Buckley, off camera, there's another row developing. That uh, ball is sent in by Buckley, that's left and wide. And the referee, I think, will actually have to take control of this and issue a yellow card, because well, this is becoming a side well, Martin, shot. What's happening is, Lark Harbour is following Tommy Walsh around. He's running, to Tommy Walsh is on a yellow card since very early in the game. And to me, it looks like Lark Harbour is trying to get involved in something with Tommy Walsh. And it's absolutely disgraceful to carry on. Ball has just barely kept it, nicked away by Thomas Stapleton. Working hard is Brian O'Mara, comes back towards Stapleton again, picked up almost by Noel McGrath. This is Killian Buckley. Steps away from the challenge of Patrick Bonamara and hits it long. A little bit of pressure. Owen Larkin underneath it. Ball comes free for his Colin Finley. The referee spotted the infringement and he's given a free in to Kilkenny, which should stretch their lead again. As Paul Curran battling with Owen Larkin here. And eventually the referee spotted the push and he's given the free to the Cats. Yeah. The referee needs to take action on well, this. Well, I know Michael. who I know who needs to take action, Declan Ryan. You know, and Henry Shefflin takes the push.